Good morning, church. If you guys can hear me out in the lobby, if you're watching online, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to come, Lord, to worship you, Lord, to worship you in spirit and truth, Father God. We love you. We thank you, Lord. Be glorified. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning. We follow your lead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Ron, you click down those pictures again. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike. Jesus. Lord, we come against any technical difficulty this morning, Lord. Lord, we are here. Life Church returns to give you praise and all the glory and all the honor. We love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name.
this morning? Amen. Are you alive this morning, Life Church? We are so glad you are here, brave, making it through the rain and the cold to come together and worship the Lord together. Those of you joining us online, we say good morning to you. We're glad you could be with us this morning. You know, thank God for the rain, right? It's a symbol of his blessing that he'll provide for us. So let's just, you know, the physical rain, let's see that being the water, the river that we come alive in. So this morning, we want to encourage you to come alive in the river. Jesus is the river of life. He also said, out of you will flow rivers of living water. So let's make that our prayer this morning as we worship him. Out of us, Lord Jesus, we pray rivers of living water will flow. That we can worship and minister to you and minister to one another. You know, as we worship this morning, we want to let you know that we have communion elements at each of the corners of this room this morning. And we encourage you to make your way with your family, with your spouse, by yourself. Make your way and spend some time remembering what Jesus did for us. Remembering what we're celebrating remembering the reason and the means for us to be able to come together and worship him. So our elements are there in the corner throughout worship this morning. Just make your way through there and remember what he did and let's lift up a shout of praise together. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us as we continue to worship the Lord.
are good, Lord. You are good, Lord. In all your ways to us, Lord. Because you are good. You're good. Yes, you are, Lord. Oh, you're so good. Because you are
You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills his place. You alone deserve all praise. You're the name above all names. Oh, be exalted now in the heavens as your glory sitting over here just struggling in my spirit because I think that sometimes you have spiritual father who needs to speak to the body and you know when you speak that you have the potential of making everybody upset at you but you can't live with yourself if you don't say it deeply concerned about the state of the church today I'm deeply concerned that we're going to drink political Kool-Aid and divide ourselves and uh, we ought to be talking about Jesus a whole bunch right now we really need to be talking a lot about Jesus and I think that there has to be an awareness. Everybody, you need to know that inside Life Church are Democrats and Republicans. They're in the room. If we say we love God and hate our brother, the Bible says we're a liar. 
I think there's political concerns, don't get me wrong. But I have a problem singing how good God is and we don't understand that regardless of which side of the fence you're choosing, you can't see that there's good from God. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good for the use of edification, that everything in the Bible still holds true for us regardless of what happens in the world that we live in. We are the light that shines in darkness. We are different people. We function by a different kingdom, not by the kingdoms of this world. That everything, when it comes down to the end, the kingdoms of this world will bow to the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. We are the hope. If we allow ourselves to be divided and led by politics rather than led by the Holy Spirit, then there will be no light that shines in darkness. And so I'm just being honest with you. And uh, I have a political persuasion. But we're gonna make a big mistake if we think being Democrat or Republican or Republican or Democrat, I don't even wanna say one before the other. We're gonna make a big mistake if we think that equates to righteousness. Because all you gotta do is go to the prison and you'll find that there are Democrats and Republicans in prison. That belonging to a persuasion doesn't make it you holy. That men are men. Are there concerns? Absolutely there are concerns. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're mighty through God. I just wanna make sure that the Bible says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And when this world crashes, and it is at some place, everybody understand that? You've read the Bible. This thing all goes to hell in a handbasket at some point. And we are the ones that bridge the gap. I went to a conference about how to heal inner cities. And the best speaker there that day was a black man who was a professor from North Texas State University. And he said something that burnt into my spirit. He said, the government and politics is never going to bring peace to this world. He said, the only possibility and the only hope for the future is the church. And I just want us to remember, we are the hope. I'm not telling you don't take your stand. I'm not saying that. I'm just reminding us of where we have to function as the church. And am I making sense to you today? I'm not, I'm not seeking to be harmful. Not any, I'm, not, I'm just saying let the church be the church. I want to show you how this works. I want to illustrate this to you about how we're the example of how you relieve tension. Tundi, would you come up here with me for a minute? This is how it works. I'm gonna share something. He doesn't know what I'm gonna share. And he would say, I'd rather you not, Pastor. Because it was private with he and I. But it illustrates what I think we need to see today. So when they, I was asked to come here by the council, and I came and I said, look, I can come for this amount of money and it was very low and nominal in comparison because I just wanted to help you out and it wasn't my intention uh, to continue to remain here. And this man right here, he walked over to me and he handed me a check for a thousand dollars and he said, I don't want my pastor to pay for gas to come down here. You see, that's 
how the kingdom functions. And there's nothing but, you know, do you think I won't lay down my life for Tundi? He didn't ask for anything. He didn't expect anything. He loved and served. And that's what it makes a difference. I don't know what he believes politically. I don't know. I, I don't know if he knows anything about me. But what I know is we have a conversation about how brothers work together and how you give and you sacrifice and you love and we even love our enemies and we do good to those who despitefully use us and that's what makes us different than the world. All I'm saying, thank you. I, I hope I didn't embarrass you. I love you. Thank you. We're not hateful people. We don't speak ugly. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but only that which is good for the use of edification. We're supposed to be healers. We're supposed to be people that stand in the gap and make up the hedge. We're supposed to be different. Let's don't lose ourselves in who this kingdom represents. That's all I'm saying. Believe what you want, but understand that in your church are different viewpoints and if we make those the battle lines, we'll divide God's church and we won't find reconciliation and then we'll have nothing to share with this world. We gotta be different, everybody. Well, I hope you come back. But this is just dad talking. I've seen a lot of life. I've seen a lot of churches divided, a lot of churches split. This is the kind of thing that the enemy will use that will drive a wedge and will look across and because of that kind of belief, we'll make one another enemies. We cannot afford that. We cannot afford that. Amen. Well, Lord, help us. My prayer is let the church be the church. And Father, that we don't function by the kingdoms of this world or by the rules of men, that there is a kingdom that comes from God and that if we will just surrender to you and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, that somehow you make a way where there seems to be no way. And Lord, it, it's looked like there's no way out sometimes, but you make the way. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Any good, everybody? Any good? I know you're concerned. I know you're concerned. But he's good. <laughs> he's still good. Could we say that? You are good. Could we sing that part again to the Lord? Just but that you are good. Hallelujah. And would you do this as we're singing? I know that you if you're concerned about COVID, then don't, but if you're not concerned, <laughs> just look at somebody. And go and greet one another for a moment this morning. And tell one another, I love you. And I pray that you lead and guide, that God will guide us. And that God is good. And I'm glad I'm sharing life with you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're good. Oh.
don't know, I think this song is kind of a, it's kind of like an anthem we have to sing out, right? We start declaring some things. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. Since when is impossible, it never stop you. Friday's disappointment, with Sunday's empty too. Since when is impossible, it never stop you. Come on now. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the place that makes a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. in here so I can hear y'all sing. Josh, I want to hear you sing with me, brother. I want to hear you sing. Pastor Mike, I want to hear you sing with me. You too, Abigail. Come on, every voice. We got to declare it so we can declare it until we believe or because we believe. Amen. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything he wants to just as the man who was thrown on the bones of a
As God says live As God says live As God says live God says live God says live God says live Those dreams Come out of the grave. Run around the sanctuary if you have to. Come out of that grave. God says live. In the drive we begin to rattle. God says live. Hope in the grave. story of the the guys who believed that God wanted to heal so bad that God wanted to heal so much they cut a hole in the roof and lowered their friends into the presence of Jesus I remember the story of a lady who fought through the crowd she believed that God is able to heal restore anything and anyone that he wanted to and she fought through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment so that she can be healed and I want to just have us finish that song and just fight through and touch the hem of his garment this morning. Fight through to receive the healing, the restoration that he wants to do in your life. So can you just lift up your hands, reaching out to him? Because we believe that our God is able to save. Our God is able to deliver. Our God is able to heal and restore anything that he wants to. 2020 was a tough year, so I really believe there are things that still need to be saved, delivered, healed, and restored. Amen. So let's lift them up to the Lord and just reach out for that blessing. Father, we thank you and we believe, we believe that by the stripes of your son Jesus, we are healed. By the blood of your son Jesus, we are forgiven. By his body being broken, we can walk in wholeness. And we receive that this morning. We receive that this morning. Father, we pray that you bless your children, that you restore, you save, you deliver, and heal your people, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. And all the saints said, amen and amen. We're going to continue to worship the Lord this morning. Our ushers are going to come forward with envelopes. If you need one, just raise your hand. You know, this is the time when... When they asked Jesus, there was a time when they asked Jesus, is it lawful to pay taxes? And he replied, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. We're going to do that this morning. We're going to give to God what is God. Because God says the tithe is his, the whole tithe is his. Actually, all of the world is his. When he asks us to bring the tithe to the storehouse. And we believe as you give this morning, he will make all grace abound. He that supplies seed to the sower will make sure that you have all grace for every good work. So lift up your giving this morning and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for your faithfulness. You are a good, good Father. And as you have blessed us, Father, we respond in obedience and trust, believing that as we give, you open up the windows of heaven, that you pour out a blessing so much that we cannot contain it. And we thank you, Father, that your word doesn't return to you void, but it will accomplish.
accomplished for that which it was sent. We declare your word this morning. We declare your faithfulness. May you be blessed by our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you guys as you give. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. Are we supposed to continue? Oh. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good morning. You can be seated. Hey, uh, this is the day that the Lord's made. Amen, amen. You met my friend John here before? There he is. <laughs> Good to see him this morning. Good to see you. So at long last, I kept saying that I was going to get part two of a message uh, that I started. So here it is at last. So um, I think this message is very, very key. Uh, I trust that you will hear it and look at the magnitude of what God has in mind for his church. So they'll get my PowerPoint up and I'll get started. I'm talking about leading divine design. I happen to believe that God has a spiritual DNA in the church and that he designed it to function a certain kind of way. There's an idea that exists in the church world that every church is different. And I'm saying, no, structurally, every church should be alike because it's a body. So a body all has the same structure. And you remember in the first message, I talked in terms of a, a skeletal structure of the body being a five-fold ministry. I talked about being uh, sinews and muscles that make the skeleton function like spiritual gifts and that every body, body has systems in it that make it run, and thank God those systems work while you're sleeping so we don't die in our sleep. And, uh, but then there's the breath, and that's the Holy Spirit who makes everything come alive. And all these are essential ingredients. But if the foundation isn't good, then everything that you build is subject to that foundation. And so I'm going to pick up where I left off um, if not, go to the website, take a look at uh, the first message. But I want to talk about demystifying the fivefold ministry and embracing God's divine design. So this is a scripture we're going to start with. You want to read it with me? But to each one of us, say that with me, each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So Christ gave a gift, and that gift is a measurement of the grace that has been given to every one of us. Therefore, when he says he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. 
I want you to notice this. The first word, according to the measure of Christ, gift, that word is singular. Then when it's given to men, it becomes plural. So I just want you to notice the shift from a big gift to many gifts. It's important to understand that, to get what he's saying. So just by way of review, how the grace was given to everyone. Everybody see that in the scripture? If you've got grace from God, wave your hand at me. Yeah, we've got grace. And how was the grace given? Um, this is echoing in my ear up here, so just let, uh, okay, you're working on it. Everybody say, thank you, Brian. Yeah. And so how was it given? Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. In other words, it was measured out to us by Jesus. And it was his gift, singular, and that is the word in Greek that's the word doria, and it simply means he gave a present to the church. Jesus took his grace and he gave it to the church as a gift. It is what he presented unto us. As he saw into the future, he knew the best way for the church to function was to use his grace. And so he gave it to us. And that's what's happening in these first things that the apostle is making the Ephesians church know that God has given you, that Jesus has given you his grace for ministry so that you will use the same thing that he used in ministry. That this isn't something from you, this is something that he gave you to use and he measured it out. And so it's simply meaning that Jesus gave his grace as a gift to the church. And this is how he is equipping the church to function, by his grace. And so when did this happen? It said when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts, more than one, to man. So when he goes up in the ascension, he sends his grace down to the church and deposits it in the church. And so he's literally quoting in this scripture from Psalm 68, 18, which says, when you ascended on high, you led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. And so this is the passage of scripture that when it starts, it's the one that says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. You've ascended on high and you've led captivity captive. That's what he's talking about in the book of Ephesians. He's saying the grace that Jesus used to conquer the devil and hell and the grave is the same grace he's giving to the church. So to have his grace is an empowerment over leading captivity captive. These gifts are the evidence of the triumph of Jesus in the church. When we use these gifts of grace, the victory of Christ works in the church. Mm. Mm. That's good. The word that comes to my mind is tasty. That tastes good right there. It seems like a peculiar scripture on the first because we're talking about gifts and grace and calling. What in the world could leading captivity captive have to do with all of that? And then you understand that it was by his grace that he conquered the enemy and he gives that same conquering grace to the church and we have been empowered to minister like Jesus ministered because we have his grace. Incredible transfer of power it's divine in every way so then what he does is he gives gifts plural so we move from the singular present to giving gifts that are plural it's the same word doma so the singular gift and the plural gifts are the same thing it's just they're being measured out differently and so we move from his gift to what he measures out and if Jesus is doing it, that means it's divine action. It means he's orchestrating this, and he put it together to work that way. So it's a divine action. These are huge streams. 
of ministry and divine favor to the church and through our lives. This is not the gifts that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 about spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you ignorant. Those gifts are translated as charisma, not doma. They're different. And so the 1 Corinthians says there's differences of ministries, diaconia. It's not the word doma. So what I'm wanting you to see is what's happening in Ephesians 4 is different from what's happening in 1 Corinthians 12. That these gifts are, if you remember in the previous one, are your calling in life. The calling of God for you, for a certain grace to work, we have all received of his fullness. So Jesus had the full measure of grace. He had it all. Stall it. What I do is I'll get out in that community and I'll connect with the police chief and I'll connect with the school and I will start networking and doors will start opening in the community as that grace starts to flow and bring favor for the church and it opens doors into the community. And then the prophet is always about righteousness and living holy. They're not just the person that has a word for everybody, but prophets always call us to repentance. And this is the thing. People will do business with people who are honest and upright and have integrity, and that should be the testimony of the church. They, they deal with justice issues and making sure that things are right. And then there are recruiters. Those are just evangelists. They're always bringing people in. They're recruiting. They're, the, the best evangelist in the church could be some grandma. She'll drag every kid in the neighborhood to church with her. You know, and so they're just evangelists. They function that way. There's people that function that way. Matt functions that way. Nacho functions a lot that way. These are just guys. They're going to drag people around with them, you know, and they really like to connect with people that don't know Jesus. And then there's care and support. Well, that's pastoring. That's care and support, making sure people get loved on and cared for and supported and counseling and all that kind of stuff happens. And then there's training and equipping. That's the teachers and the disciple-making process of the church that teach people how to rightly divide the word of truth and how to live by the word of God and function by the word. If those things happen, the grace of God will flow in the church in an unprecedented way.